Oh, thinking about weight and whatnot, I have to say, this trip, it was glaringly obvious that in the past, my weight had really restricted me from things I wanted to do. And like, there were times when I would think, you know, I can't do this. It's either not safe or I'm not going to fit in the chair or I physically cannot do that. This trip, I did everything I wanted to do and my weight was not a limitation. Like when we were at Callaway Park, there were rides that said certain weight restrictions, like only up to 260 pounds, you could do this or up to 275. And there were times in my life before I started getting healthy, like two year, two and a half years ago, I was 285 pounds. I couldn't have done majority of what we did on this trip two and a half years ago. Well, even the water sliding going up the stairs nonstop, like, like you said, you had no fatigue in that at all. Right. And, yeah. it, it's amazing. You know, people say that your weight, like don't judge weight. People can be healthy and overweight. And I believe that to a certain extent. But from my own personal experience, when I was 285 pounds, I could not have done the pipe coaster. I could not have done several of the rides at Callaway Park. I would not have the physical stamina to do some of the activities that we did with the kids. And ultimately, I'm missing out. And whether you think so or not, that does impact your mental health, your physical health, your relationships. And so on this trip, I really saw the benefit and the advantage to being healthy, getting to do everything I wanted to do. And it builds stronger relationships because I'm doing things with my kids and my friends and I'm not sitting on the sidelines just watching and feeling sorry for myself. And that's why being healthy is so pivotal. And... I know I was one of those people that said I can be overweight and still do everything, but I didn't. It was a lie to myself. And that's one of the whys. Why should you get healthy? Why should I continue to be healthy? Because it feels good and you get to do more. Very well said. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mitch. And I'm Carlin. And this is Our Healthy Lifestyle. And we just got back from an adventure. And what an adventure it was. We packed so much into four days. It was crazy. I don't know how we had time to do anything. So naturally, we're exhausted today. <laughs> <laughs> back in the winter when we still had snow on the ground, my friend Ashley and I, we started talking about taking a summer vacation with the family and really gearing it up to adventure, doing stuff with the kids, things the kids would love. And so that's what we did. Our kids are quite young still, like my kids are eight and 10 and uh, her son is younger than that. And one thing our kids love is Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. And so we kicked off our adventure on Friday by going to the cinema and watching Jurassic World Dominion or something like that. Yeah, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Okay. And it was great. It was a little slow moving at the beginning, like, if I'm being honest. It wasn't the best of the Jurassics, but... It also wasn't the worst. It was still really good. And at the scary parts, I looked over and all the kids were leaning forward looking at the screen like ah! it had all of the it the good nostalgia of the original Jurassic and it was nice to see some old cast members again in there like Professor Grant whatnot after the movie we hopped back in the truck and we drove about three hours to our first destination where we met the family we were traveling with for supper and we got to our hotel and had a, a swim. Yeah, and that was basically it for Friday. It was still, it was really good. It was... 
little hour, over four hours of driving and then the movie and the hotel swimming. It right. Was, it was a pretty long day. So then we got up early on... Um, it would be Saturday morning. Saturday, right. And we got on the road right away. We wanted to get to Revelstoke, which was our final destination. Yeah, we still as... had about five hours drive from, from where we were. Right. So we did that. We were up early and we ended up getting to Revelstoke just after lunch kind of thing. And it was a beautiful drive. You know, once you get into those mountains, three hours goes like that. Yeah, there's so much to see and keep your mind occupied that you're not even thinking about the time you're spending traveling. And it was fun. Like, you know, I had that anxiety if you followed us for a while on our trip to Invermere when we did the the hot springs i had like a panic attack because of the sharp cliffs well there was more sharp cliffs there was but i didn't have the panic attacks i think the difference was we were on pavement this time we were on pavement and there was a guardrail there but it was still really close to the edge right yeah. around the golden area yeah there was a stretch of construction that i don't even understand the logistics and how they got their equipment in there like, I think they're twinning the highway there, and it's the scale of the amount of work just to set up so that they can do the work is mind-boggling. We are very close to the edge. I'm not having a panic attack like the last time we were in the mountains, but I think it's because we are on concrete, and we have this little metal ledge crazy the construction that they're doing i think they're twinning the highway but how right beside us is a cliff i can't imagine the amount of money that went in even just preparing this road to be able to make into a wider road that was a scary stretch but made it through no anxiety attack so we got to Revelstoke and we checked into our... Well, we couldn't check in because oh, right. we were there early. We couldn't right. check in until four o'clock. So we went to the aquatic center. Yeah. The we got to Revelstoke. We had swimming and then we were able to go and check into our resort. And we had a beautiful suite to stay in. I've taken some pictures for you. It was just really comfortable. Yeah. And then at the same resort, our friends had a cabin in the woods and so it was like two completely different worlds we had the the kitchen and the living room and all that stuff and they had forested yeah. beauty and it was only a five minute walk away it was actually the guy who rented us the the suite and the cabin he said you guys really booked it and planned it with the best of both worlds you've got the comfort of the kitchen and the suite and you've got the the camping the wilderness the privacy out in the woods mm -hmm. and we spent time at both places so we we cooked supper at our place right and then we went back and we had s'mores around the campfire and the kids played laser tag and we hiked around the trails that were around that cabin and it was it was a lot of fun it was a great start to mm -hmm. the trip and then we went to bed and that brought us to Saturday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My days got all mixed up. That's what holidays are for. <laughs> so Sunday morning we got up and we got going right away. We went to the pipe coaster on, yeah. at Revelstoke Mountain Resort. And that, that might have been my favorite part. Yeah, we had to take a gondola up to the, about halfway up the mountain. There was a second gondola that went to the summit, but that wasn't open to the public. It's so fun. I love riding in gondolas. Not everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to get up the gondola. It was fun to see the kids on the gondola. And then we literally pipe coastered down the mountain. Yeah. And we've got a few clips of that.
After we were done the pipe coaster, we had about a 20 minute drive to get to the Enchanted Forest. Oh, and the kids loved it. They We pulled into the parking lot and boom, they were a gone. giant castle with the dragon on top. They're like, oh my goodness! Yeah. And they just ran. And that was really yeah. cool. Well, this Enchanted Forest, the person who, who started it, I think they started in the late 60s developing it. And they've continued like maintaining and kind of updating certain things. But there's lots of uh, lots of stuff there that it's it's showing its age, I would say. <laughs> but it <laughs> was it still nicely. really awesome. It was super cool. I've really enjoyed it. Like I, to me, like you say, it's showing age, and to me, I'm like, well, this is just how it is in the fairy tale. That's true. It's like each each little section of the enchanted forest is based on the different fairy tales and some of those fairy tales are quite old so yeah. to me it was it was suitable and then part of that enchanted forest there is a nature a trail. yeah so we got in a nice i don't know probably close to four kilometer yeah walk. it took us about 45 minutes to to do the whole walk yeah and we did we only paused in one spot to feed the fish and this was cool because this was out in a, it was natural fish out in a river stream yeah, it's, a, it's a salmon salmon spawning spot it's a yeah tongue twister totally but they weren't salmon the ones that we were finished no but eating. like yeah the river runs through there and this is just a, a spot where as the river meanders it it fills a pool so we had bought the kids fish food at the beginning so clearly this is a thing although there's a feeding pond in the in the enchanted forest so I don't know if this is, but either way, those fish got some food and they were wild. They were just jumping up to the water. I think I got a few clips of, mm -hmm. of the kids feeding the fish and the fish just going for it. It was so cool. And there was a thousand year old cedar tree there that stunning, like the it, size. Yeah, it survived a few forest fires. Yeah. How like thousand years and there was old. trees around that were completely burnt out where it's just the the stump that's charcoal inside and stuff around it but this one tree just it was absolutely beautiful and that's the thing about going to the mountains the beauty is unsurpassable like mm -hmm. i'm a flatlander i love the flatland but man the mountains are beautiful so we finished at the the nature walk and then I think I don't know I'm I'm taking a guess that this is Mitch's favorite part of the trip. That's my guess. And we went to the adventure the Sky Trek Adventures which is just the the next lot over from the Enchanted Forest so we didn't even have to drive anywhere. And man, they zip line, they climb, they went so it's a sky, what is it called? Sky Trek Adventures. No, 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 no. The, the part that you did, like it was a skyline adventure. Like Yeah, I can't, I don't know. Or treetop adventure. Yeah. But there was all sorts of different obstacles from like walking up a cargo net that's probably 60, 70 feet long, heading uphill, climbing up that, and then you zip line down to the next platform, and then you got across like... A rope ladder or just a rope where you've got one rope above you one rope below and you're traversing across and there's all sorts of things like that and it I took us almost two hours to to complete the course mitch and um gavin <laughs> they did the yeah we did that track me that and course. ashley we stayed with the kids and the kids went and did their own yeah the kids right version of the so, same thing like they're quite high off the ground the kids are about 10 feet off the ground which is still high enough maybe a little bit more than 10 feet actually because i'm five feet it was at least double my body i'm five feet seven by the way so not just five feet but anyways yeah at the start of our sky trek adventure we had the training course and we're all harnessed in and got our helmets on and we uh, had to go out to the middle of a line and it was only about five feet up and our uh, guide was like Kate just let go of the ropes and sit back on the harness just so we know you're comfortable doing it and I did that right away and she's like 
you seem pretty pretty comfortable or confident in that and i was like well i've got tons of experience climbing and rappelling and stuff so being in a harness is nothing new to me i knew mitch would rock this yeah. adventure like he's got so much upper body strength and i thought it was just zip lining so like i wanted to take part i tried to get tickets and they're like nope somebody's gotta stay with the kids which makes sense it's thank goodness yeah. because when i saw what the guys were doing and how much upper body strength it would have taken i'm not sure i could have done it and this is after two and a half years of working out which brings me to the fact that we did so much walking and adventuring our exercise was just built into our days already and the day that Mitch did the adventure park, and so I had got the big walk in, I counted that as one exercise for 75 hard, I did yoga. Here's the other thing too, I didn't add, but when we were at Strathmore, our first stop to get an exercise in, they had a fitness center at the hotel. So Ashley and I went and we did a workout. So we kept health a priority on this trip too. And when we went to restaurants, I tried to make as healthy of choices as I could. So was it perfect? No. But was it as perfect as it could be for a holiday? Yeah, we wanted to make sure totally. we enjoyed our holiday. Totally. And at the one restaurant I ordered, a, it was an arugula and beet salad. Amazing. And that was probably the best salad I've ever had. And like, I can eat steak on 75 Hard. I can eat steak on my nutrition plan. So I made sure I had a steak or... I had a salad. I had a taco salad at our first stop. Like, and so was every ingredient perfect? No. And then we cooked like at Revelstoke, we cooked our own meals. Mm -hmm. Like we made health a priority. So the day that we went to the pipe coaster, Enchanted Forest, Skytrek Adventure Park, um, and then we were exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> we got home, we cooked supper again right yeah had supper yeah. right um uh, and then a few we, of us fell asleep on the couch right and we went to bed yeah. and that was a great evening so then monday morning monday morning and that was our last day in revelstoke we got up we had a nice full filling breakfast cleaned up and hit the road to go back start heading home for the home stretch and so we went back to calgary and when we got there, we went straight to Callaway Park. It had been wow, well over 20 years since I had been to Callaway Park. When well, I was a geez, kid? 25 years. I begged my parents, let's go to Callaway Park. No, we never went. And it was awesome. Yeah, we showed up. Like the, the half day starts at 2 p.m. there. And we showed up there. And I expected to see a full parking lot. And the parking got, lot was next to empty. We were able to park in the closest row to the door. I felt like VIPs. We were sitting there and there was no one there. Yeah, we... No lineups. Every ride we went on, we were able to just walk up and we might have to wait for the ride to finish its current circuit, but we didn't have to wait in any lines. There was so even great. some rides where when it ended, there was nobody in line and the people would be like, do you want to go again? So we did so many rides. I think my favorite, it was called Timber Falls. Here's a picture of it. <laughs> Don't be confused by the kids' faces. They loved it too. Yes, they look absolutely terrified, but at the end they're like, let's do it again. Yeah. And then we went on the roller coaster and that was a huge mistake for me. Like I get motion sick. I thought because I did so good on Timber Falls, I would be fine. Went on the roller coaster, just about puked after, and that was pretty much, I couldn't do any more crazy rides after that. I'm my hand as tight as it can be. I'm terrified. You're gonna have to put it backwards. We're doing a roller coaster. I'm scared. Hopefully I don't throw up. I was sitting next to our son on the roller coaster and we were going up the, the first descent. And at this coaster, there's, there's a little dip. You go back up again and then you have the draw. And I looked over at him when we were doing the drop and he looked like he was about to cry and then it turned into the biggest smile and like as we're getting whipped around the corners and doing the, the like 
inversions. It's not a loop, but it's, I guess, a helix, I think it's called. But you end up upside down a couple times. My daughter calls it a corkscrew. Yeah, that that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I look over and he's got this big smile and comes to the end and he's just like, can we do it again? <laughs> and I was like, well, we got lots of other rides we want to try, but we, we, will, we will try to get back on here. And that's what we did. We went through and we spent, I don't know, two or three, three hours. Yeah. I think it was about three hours by the time. Five, six, seven, yeah, three hours we were there and it didn't feel like three hours. No. And we just went from ride to ride to ride to ride and it was so much fun. Finally, we got back to our hotel. We had some supper at the hotel and then we went water sliding. For It was about 9.30 by the time we were able to, after supper, bring our stuff into the hotel. Went water sliding. Yeah, we only had about what half hour in yeah the pool before yeah. it closed it was packed it was it was crazy busy in there so we got it closed down at 10 o'clock went back to our room and then that morning so on tuesday morning our final day we got up and we went hard we, we counted that as a workout mitch and i and the kids it was not busy there was barely anyone at the pool and the water slides and it was awesome because our son had a major progression yeah he had gone from me holding him up at the bottom of the water slide to to me catching him at the bottom of the water slide and to it's, it's amazing. nobody catching him at the bottom of the water slide. right and that so. just goes to show how when we're ready for things we progress and he had some anxiety about water sliding prior to that and he worked through it yeah. and it, he loved it so that took us to the end of our trip. Well, kind of the end. We went shopping right after we were done water sliding. So during our holiday, we were still managed to keep up with our 75 hard challenge. Um, it wasn't always the easiest thing, but we made the time to do it. I would wake up and I would read the book on the deck and do my journaling on that. And I would just find time throughout the day. Mitch did majority of the driving on this trip. So I was able to get my reading done in the vehicle or at our hotel rooms. I was super impressed at the fact that exercise was still a priority. I did a workout at a fitness center, continued doing yoga. And then just the nature of this trip was really physically active. And so we were getting tons of walking in and that made it easier i would say the hardest part of maintaining 75 hard was the nutrition aspect because we were going to the occasional restaurant but i made the best choices i could within the menu of that restaurant and i mean is there areas i could have tightened up sure but i also want to live life and enjoy my holiday so did i have a bun with a chicken burger yes i did and do I think that that's fail, failing 75 hard? No, I don't. Because we eat healthier. Now, that being said, I'm obviously not maintaining a caloric deficit because my weight is maintaining. So right now I'm 196. And... When I left right before the trip, I had stepped on the scale and I was still 196. So I'm plateaued right now. And that means I'm, I'm not going to make my goal in nine days to lose nine pounds. You could. But UFC fighters lose 20 pounds. To <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to cut weight for a UFC fight. So I will not have lost 100 pounds by August 1st, but that's okay. Because I'm still on the downward trend. I'm still exercising hard every day. I'm still eating healthy. And I am going to get darn close. Because I am going to take and re... I'm going to do a really hardcore week this week. I've decided. I'm going to... I'm going to get some more weight loss. Because I'm sick and tired of this plateau. And I need to get to 185 before September 1st. Before, I said that before August 1st, but now before September 1st. I gotta do it, guys. That's the great thing about goal dates. You can just change the date. <laughs> the goal stays the same. And the dream stays alive. 
I hope you've enjoyed our most recent holiday vlog and our update on our weight and 75 hard. On that note, take care, brush your hair, and we'll see you guys on Saturday. Oh, yeah.